Liquid Shapes are a new addition to Moho 14, and they're incredibly powerful and allow you to do many different things. So here, we're just going to show some basic examples of what we could do with this, and hopefully it'll spark your imagination. So to get started, we're going to first focus on a vector layer using a basic shape. I'm going to grab the Draw Shape tool, and in this case, let's turn off Auto Stroke and pick a color that's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. So with your color selected, I'm going to come in and just draw out this oval just like this. And with that, I want to make some manipulations. I want to create something that looks kind of like a flame. So if I grab the curvature tool, I can come in here and maybe manipulate this to be a little bit more looking like a drop of sorts. So just come in, add some like this, and we can just kind of reduce and just kind of get something that looks like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it'll be a good start for us. Now, on the same layer, we're going to go back to that Draw Shape tool, and this time, let's select a star shape. And we can begin by coming over here to the top right, and we'll just draw out a star like so. Now, once we have this star drawn out, I'm going to come in with my Transform Points tool and move it over so that we have the star touching the original shape. Now, if we come over here to the Select Shape tool, and we select this particular shape, you'll see we have some options up here. By default, we have this set to Normal. But we can also set this to Add, Subtract, or Clip. And in addition, we can do what's called Blending. So let's just take a look really quick. With this star selected, if I come up and choose Add, you can see that nothing is really happening here. But if I come in and choose Subtract, that's a different story. It's cutting into the design, and it's creating a unique shape. It's almost like masking, but not quite. It's a little bit different. What's more is, once we have this established, we can come in and start to play with the blend settings. So if I were to increase this blend, you can see here that we're rounding off the edges of this star and how it's intersecting with this particular shape. You can see the star is still there, and we're not actually altering the way the lines work on the star. However, the way it's blending with the original shape is different. So here, with that blend applied, we can start to copy this shape and paste it to different parts of the original shape. So I'm just going to copy and paste using Control C and then Control V with this star, and we're gonna move it over here. Now, I could go in and just adjust the rotation slightly so it's a little bit different. And you'll also notice, because I copied and pasted this particular shape, we now have the blend mode also being applied. So the blend is still the same, which is good, and we can come in here and start to just manipulate this further. So we have something that looks like this. Let's copy and paste another star, and perhaps put it down right here. And we could even just kind of back it off a little bit, maybe just do a slight rotation like this. So we have something that looks like that. And then we can do one more. We can just paste this over here. And you could do as many of these as you want. But in the case of the design here, we're kind of trying to create a flame. So coming in here and being able to kind of set this up so that it has a rounded bottom, I think will work for us and then having little parts here and there kind of rotating in, I think will also work. So we have something that looks about like this right now. And just one more thing to note, if you were working with this and you decided, okay, I want to come in and add another star or another shape to be applied as a subtraction, I'm actually just going to remove this star temporarily just so we can see this in play. And I come over here and grab the star and I'm going to draw in a star like I would before. Now, if I come down here, since I didn't copy and paste this, I just drew out a new star, go to the Select Shape tool, click on that shape, and we go to Subtract. You'll see here that the subtraction is not applying the blend because we have the blend back to 
zero because we didn't copy the parameters over from before. So if we go in and start to try to blend this, you're going to see it actually affects all of the other subtraction shapes that are currently being applied. So you can make that alteration, but just note, if you do this, it's going to then alter the others as well. So it just kind of depends on how you want to apply this and what you're looking for in terms of setting these things up. If you have a certain workflow in mind, you might want to do it after the fact, or you might want to copy and paste. It just depends on how you want to approach it. But I just wanted to point out that you can copy and paste these things to make it easier to keep the parameters. But if you want to adjust all of them after the fact, you can do that as well. As this stands right now, we could go in and actually just work with this. We could start you know, with the star, go to frame 24, and we could add in this animation and you can see that it would create this nice looking effect. You could do the same for the star down here, you know, and we could animate all these individually and create the effect. But we can set this up to be a little bit more friendly with how we want this to all work using bones. So let's go back here to frame zero. And I'm simply going to right click on layer one and choose to group with selection. Once you have these shapes within this group, I'm going to right click on layer two, which is the group and choose to convert to bone. And then I want to right click on layer one, which is where all of our shapes are, go to quick settings. And here I want to make sure we enable paths and then hit apply. So what this will do now is even if we are on the bone layer, we can see the paths of all of our shapes, including the stars, which will make this a lot easier to work with as we start the rigging and then eventually the animation process. So now with that bone layer, we're just going to go to the add bone tool and we're going to add in some bones. That way it'll make it easier to rotate. So we're going to come in here and we'll just add in a vertical bone to the center of each star. So starting with the top left, I'm going to hold and shift, click and drag, and just move up like so to add a bone. And then we're going to do the same for the next star, but we don't want it connected to this bone. So you can use escape or you can alt click off to deselect the bone. And we're just going to draw another vertical bone, click off, draw another one, and then one more, just like that. And then, I'm going to use the select bone tool and select that first bone I just made and go up to the top and let's name it rotation. So that way it's easier to understand what this bone is going to do. Now we want to bind our stars to the bones and on the bone layer, I'm going to grab the bone strength tool to begin and then use control a or command a, and we're just going to reduce the strength down to zero because we don't want any strength on these. Next, we're going to go over here, click on that vector layer, and we're going to start binding our points. So we'll start with the top left and just kind of work our way around. We want to go over here and make sure we have the bind points tool selected. Alt click on the first yellow bone here. With the bone selected, you can use your cursor to click on the star shape and it will select all the points for that shape. And then we're just going to choose to bind points. So alt click and then click bind points and repeat that now for the other two. So now we're going to animate these bones. Let's go ahead and do a full turn on frame 72. So on frame 72, I'm going to come in here using the transform bone tool and I'm on the top left star. I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to make this one clockwise. We're just going to come in and I'm going to rotate it all the way down. And as you can see, as I'm rotating it, we're creating that fire effect. And I'm just going to go all the way back up to the top like this. So almost a 360 movement here. And actually coming in here to the angle, I'll change this to negative 270. So that way it goes back to that default position. So if we come in here now, when we take a look at this, we can see that it has like this nice wave occurring. However, there's one thing that is not quite right, and that is we have this set to a smooth animation transition. You can see that it sort of slows down near the end, and that's how, by default, Moho works with keyframes. But we can change that pretty easily here. I'm just going to come over here and copy the frames from 0 to 1. And then 
we can right click on frame one and then choose to set this to linear, which will create a perfectly consistent movement without any slowdown or speed up. Then on frame 72, we can right click and then choose to cycle. And this should now set this up so that way it keeps going like this. And we just have this nice consistent movement occurring with the star. And the goal here is to apply that to all the stars. We now want the other bones to rotate as well. So to make this as easy as possible, let's go ahead and select all three of these bones. And then let's note that this one is also named rotation. So with these three bones selected, we're going to come over here to bone constraints, come down to control bones, and for angle, we want to select rotation from the list. Now, if we close this and we play this out, you can see that we have something like this occurring. And that looks pretty good. However, it's not really going in the right direction. We want the bones on the right side to go in the opposite direction to make it look like the fire is moving up. So I'm going to select those two bones, come over here to my angle constraints, and for rotation, let's set this to negative 100 to make it go in the opposite direction. So now if we play this out, you can see that we have something that looks like this. And I'm seeing here now that I actually moved this in the opposite direction, but that's okay. So what we can do here is come over here and I'm just going to remove that key for that bone. And instead of going clockwise, I wanna go counterclockwise. I kind of realized that after the fact, but it's good to show that you can actually change these things on the fly. So we're just gonna go up to about like that. There we are. And if we come in here now, we can see that the fire appears to be moving up and that looks a lot better. We just need to come in here now and make sure that we set this to cycle. So that last frame sets to cycle. Now we can come in here and we can watch this repeat and it's looking better. So again, how you rotate it will depend on the effect as well. In this case, having it rotate like this makes it look like it's moving up like we have fire. So we can even go further with this and alter the vector points. As you can see, I'm still within the animation here and I'm going to select the top right star. And if we come over here and just make sure we are looking at the same thing here, we wanna make sure that this loops to 72. So with that shape selected, I'm just going to come in here and we'll create a key at 72. And I'm going to use control F to lock down 72. And we're going to highlight those keys and choose to cycle back. So we have this going on now, but what if at some point here we want, let's say this point of the star to animate, to add more variation. Well, we can do that now. If we come in here and alter this, perhaps we wanted to make it look like it's almost cutting things off, or maybe it is cutting things off. So you kind of come in here and now you can see it kind of cuts that off just like that. And we could just continue to alter this if we wanted to. So if there's different points that we want to alter for whatever reason, we could do that. So come in here and maybe you just want some variation for whatever reason at that point, we could do it. Maybe here you want to cut in a little bit more we can do that. So it just kind of comes in like this and you can very easily add variation to this just by coming in here and altering the points and you can create some really unique looking results. And because we have this set to cycle, it'll continue, as you can see here, these points are growing and shrinking. It'll continue to cycle just like that. Now from here, you could go in and add let's say a glow to this, we could replicate this effect, add a blur to it to make it look like it's glowing, add blend modes, whatever the case is. But hopefully this gives you a good idea of how we could go about using liquid shapes inside of Moho.